one thing you know I talked about uh, besides you catching up with a few other growers this morning, but a lot of them were talking about winterization and fresh frozen. So yeah. how much? I mean, you don't have to tell us exactly how many pounds you're pushing. Yeah. But even just a percentage, if right. that's something you're getting into, and, and how much of it are you allocating to essentially, for lack of a better term, diversify your, your portfolio? Totally. So, I mean, we have 50,000 square feet outdoor. Um, I would say this is kind of the first year that I'm actually allocating a good amount of it to fresh frozen, just kind of seeing where the market's evolved, on the scale of production where we're at, limitations on where we can dry it. So getting into that fresh frozen, which means we just take the plant fresh, bucket down, clean it up a little bit, and freeze it right away. Straight to the freezer. Straight to the freezer. And that's where the extract artists these days are, that's where they get the most high-end product. Right. And that ties into live rosin, essentially. Yeah, well. live rosin yeah. and or live resin. So okay. you got the live rosin, which is the organic kind of bubble hash extraction, yeah. and then pressing it, and that'll get you the live rosin. And then the other side of it is the live resin, which guys are pushing the fresh frozen material through BHO. Gotcha. And then, um, and then just pre- creates a different product. Yeah, and all together, right? Totally, totally different. Because I, I actually this year, just as an experiment, gave the same crop, same you know, same everything, same greenhouse, to a, a BHO live resin dist- uh, manufacturer and a live rosin, and the product no is so different. If I didn't know they were grown even the same strain, really, just, it's just such a difference in the way it comes out, and we might even see that amongst extractors as well, just because of different techniques. So that's kind of fun and cool, is just to see the differences of like your raw material. Because when you dry the flour, it's gonna be the dried flour. But the extract brings this whole other element to like, uh, kind of an art the form artistry. Itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it brings the I think artistry like, out. I think of Frenchy Cannoli. I know he's he's really come up on the scene lately, and there's there's individuals like him around the world. But it really is an art. That's yeah. one thing you know. As as crazy as Frenchy can be, I love that he really puts that emphasis that it is an art when he's doing bubble hash. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it is a totally different experience from the. Product. And that's the only thing. It takes different infrastructure. So you got to yeah. have freezer rooms ways to transport that and then what if a freezer goes down and you have 200 pounds of material in there you got to have a backup in place like so there's a lot of things it's a lot of a lot to think about a lot of moving parts yeah. uh i probably prefer i wish i could just dry it all traditionally and and do that but it's fun to evolve Experiment. with the market and yeah. see new products come out and Definitely. be a part of all that so very cool just got to adapt and do a little bit of everything so overall i'd say probably you know, we focus on trying to keep the tops of the plants for flower, the best stuff of the yeah. best, yeah. and then focus on the lower. And it also helps with the uh, harvest timing because we can get all those tops that are more uh, susceptible to mold or botrytis, yeah. get them hanging, drying. Gives us more time to deal with, like, the lower buds. Still good quality. Yeah. You know, as a grower, I always smoke the smalls. I don't, you know, yeah. it all tastes Bigger the same. Bigger isn't always better, right? Yeah, That's it's not I always better. I love it's artichokes, and I'm like, the, the biggest artichokes aren't always the most flavorful. It's funny how that transcends yeah. so many things. Or even, like, yeah, lobsters, yeah. shrimp. I mean, there are so many things, that, yeah. to your point. Quality over quantity, right? So it allows us to to, to time out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She says, big hands, you know you're the one. I'm like, is that from a song? Is that from a song? Uh, uh, um, yeah, so it allows us to time out the uh, harvest a little bit. Yeah. And so I'd say we're doing about 25% in wow. the fresh frozen this year. Pretty fair amount for a 50,000 square foot canopy. Yeah. That's, yeah, not yeah, bad that's at why all. I got 420 square feet of re- freezer space <laughs> freezer coming up this week. <laughs> there are there are supposedly some companies coming up that that are that are manufacturing companies that rely on that fresh frozen material. I haven't personally run into a company that's sending troops up to do that work for us. I am working with one of the, the biggest brands in the in the space right now in the industry, and uh, they're about to launch, if they haven't launched it yet, a, uh, a live rosin brand. And I can guess who that is. I yeah. think they're based out of uh, just, just not too far from here, actually. Uh, they're, they're based in here in Humboldt. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so we're going to be one of their, their main three uh producers for their fresh frozen line nice um uh, i mean I, I think it's probably open knowledge they have an instagram up so i think it's all, <laughs> i think it's all good but uh papa and barclays is introducing a live really cool. brand. fun brand fun brand so it's gonna be papa's papa select <laughs>